Hey everybody, welcome to the Ron Line Report. Very special guest today, Sean Ray. You know Sean. Sean's the man. Sean, Sean does not shy away from having an opinion, from uh, answering questions nobody else will answer. So that's why I had to go. That's why you're calling. That's why I'm calling. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm so let me apologize first about the echo. I mean, I, I moved a couple of years ago. I got the the uh, the tile floor and the vaulted ceiling, so it sounds like I'm in an echo chamber. Yeah. Uh, but it is my home office here in uh, Southern California. Uh, before we get into the topic, those earthquakes, did you feel them? I did. I felt the earthquake. I was at a gas station. Um, the first one I didn't feel, I was in the shower. Okay. Fourth of July, I believe it was. Was that Fourth of July? I think so. Uh, I was in the shower. I didn't feel it. I saw it on the news. And then the next one... I was getting gas, uh, and I was actually inside paying for my gas, and I looked outside, and you could see the – and I'm just thinking, there's nowhere to run. If this thing blows, I'm going up with it. So I just looked at the guy and go, if you're the last thing I'm going to see, wow. <laughs> you know, it was a trip because we both kind of felt a little off kilter. It was almost like it was a rolling yeah. time of an earthquake, and I'd been through all of them. Um, never experienced any damage here where I'm, where I'm at in Orange County, but it was one that I could measure. Like I'm sitting there looking at the – at the shelves waiting for shit to fall on the ground. It never did. Hmm. But looking out at the cars kind of like moving around, I thought, holy crap, is this the big one? It, felt, it was like 45 seconds. Yeah. I mean, what's the, what's the strongest one that you've ever felt out there in your lifetime? Well, I think this was it. It was like 7.1. Yeah. But I mean, you... I, don't, I don't remember one being higher than that, but I remember the North Great, North Ridge, okay. and that didn't do anything to, to damage where I'm at. But uh, this one I felt because I could actually. I was watching it unfold, and uh, I could see where people would get a heart attack because really it does throw you into a state of confusion. Like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I'm I'm standing and talking to the cashier, but I'm also looking at the glass to exit. Yeah. I'm looking at the pumps where the cars are getting gas. I'm thinking, I this is it. This is what I can do. Well, I mean, what do you think was going to happen? Uh, like the earth was going to open up and swallow everybody? Actually, no. I, I'm numb to it. I mean, my entire existence on this planet, I, I, the only thing that's ever happened in all these California earthquakes was I had a picture fall off the wall. So, so I'm kind of, we're numb to it. I, I definitely will take an earthquake over a hurricane bearing down on me or tornado True. or flooding. Uh, the preparation for a hurricane is probably, and the evacuation for a hurricane is a whole lot more uh, traumatic than I think going through a 45 second earthquake that doesn't amount to much. Oh, absolutely. Bring on the trimmers. But I'm looking at that Arnold Classic trophy. I'd be worried of that toppling over and shattering. That's, that's my uh, Arnold Classic Sandow. That's my body of work right there. That's my baby. Like I've been carrying this thing around since 91. <laughs> Sweet ass trophy. Can you see it? <laughs> you see it coming up? I, I even remember the banners inside Gold's Jim Fullerton when you won congratulating you that they had those up for a good month or so after the show. Yeah, I mean, for a bodybuilder, listen, I mean, I was in the second Arnold Classic, uh, I was in the third Arnold Classic, and I was in uh, the 1996 Arnold Classic. And uh, I got to tell you that I think, without question, anyone that's ever participated in the Arnold Classic uh, has to feel kind of like the actors walking on the red carpet to go to the Oscars. I mean, Olympia is a different experience. Hmm. But because it's coming from Arnold, who many of us admire and respect, and, and, and get this red carpet treatment, it's a different vibe. And to actually win it and hang on to this trophy, it is my Academy Award. It is my Grammy Award. It's the Sandow that I never got. So that's that has special meaning. This helped me buy my very first house. And I think the validation for any bodybuilder is to be able to say, look, Ma, I did it. Look, Dad, I made it, right? right. That trophy represented that. That was the $70,000 down payment I was able to put on my house, and I have – that entire 1991 experience uh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jim, and Bob Lormer to thank for that. So it's a little bit more important for me than getting second. I mean, you got to imagine getting second at anything is uh, it, it's a agony and ecstasy, right? I mean, one person stopped me from winning my ultimate goal and my ultimate dream, but it, it didn't feel anything like winning this, hmm. right? So All right, my high let's thing. jump right into this. You have some new intel, I was told. The, uh -huh. the Sean Roden picture that was published one week <laughs> ago. Yeah, so one week ago, Sean Roden throws up a side chest shot where he's looking, you know, probably like four weeks out. His condition is, he looks light years better than he did, uh, yeah. you know, five weeks before at Pittsburgh where everybody was, everybody was very upset about the way uh, Sean looked in Pittsburgh. It was, 
It was terrible. So, I mean, he was skinny fat, basically. For oh, okay. Day. So I wasn't alone in my assessment. I thought I was. No, no. Um, every, I, the only people that defended him that I saw were a few fellow pros, and they were saying, don't judge him for how he looks now because the show – obviously, we know the show's not now. We know that. We're I know the difference between May and September. They're completely yeah. different months. But, you know, that's that was the showcase – for all all pros, it's an honor to be asked to go to Pittsburgh to Jim Mannion's pro show every May and pose. It's it's usually Mr. Olympia and anywhere from five to ten of the top finalists from the Olympia. Sure. So you want to be you want to represent yourself and the sport and your title if you're Mr. Olympia. And uh, you know I, I came down on him pretty harsh. He's probably never going to talk to me again. But well, I mean, listen, I came down on him hard, and he did give me an exclusive interview. Uh, right before the 4th of July, but I think he understood the constructive criticism. He knew from which I spoke, my point is, I, I, listen, anybody can say anything, but we listen to the ones I think that we respect or we admire or, or maybe can can understand the dynamic of how it's coming. Sean knows my delivery, uh, and, and he's not the only one I didn't pull punches with. I mean, let's be real. I'm, I'm a critic. I'm an analyst, and, and there's some. if I did that to Dexter Jackson, we would never talk again because Dexter couldn't handle that type of brutal honesty, right? So uh, there's people that can handle the truth, and there's others that can't. Sean was real quick to tell me just last week um, it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. But, you know, all that stuff's 2020 in the rear view. Yeah. Um, I'm the one that got bashed from, from the Sean Roden supporters. Who am I? I never won Olympia, and, right. and all I do is bash people, and I'm sour grapes because I'm not, not Mr. Olympia. Listen, you don't have to be Mr. Olympia to realize that you're looking at Mr. Olympia that looks like shit. Yeah. So my, my, my argument was, oh, I never won the Olympia. So me posing fat and out of shape is is a, it doesn't carry the same amount of weight. Yeah. Um, and it's happened. Of course, my fat pictures wind up online too. Sure. Uh, I think we all have them from Flex Wheeler to Ronnie Coleman. Uh, I think we'd be hard pressed to find Lee Haney fat and out of shape. I've actually never seen it, but he he, he didn't get bigger in the off season. It almost seemed like Lee got smaller, like Arnold. Right. Uh, that being said. Um, if, if we don't hold Mr. Olympia to a higher standard, who is? I mean, we're, we're supposed to be able to criticize the champions, which keep the champion one step ahead of everybody else. Like, the champ, there's more expected from the champion, right? So to whom much is given, much is required. And that's why I thought, like, you know what? It, it has to come hard. It's got to come swift. And it's got to be with authority that we say, no, this is not acceptable. Hmm. Because if we start getting used to this, this is going to continue happening uh, with the next Mr. Olympia. What, what's going to give the next Mr. Olympia a reason to go and get in shape? He's going to say, well, Sean Roden poses fat and out of shape, and I'm only competing once a year. Look, if you're only competing once a year, then I think as promoters, and I'm one, uh, we need to start vetting out what our guest poses look like before we give them their money. Hmm. Like, for example, Sean Roden wasn't there just to do Jim Mannion a favor, any more so than Dexter Jackson and the other guys that posed. Yeah. Everyone walked away with an envelope. I believe Sean Roden didn't, and I believe Sean Roden told him to keep it. Wow. Now, that's not a fact. It could have come from Jim Mannion that says, you don't deserve one. It could have came from from Sean Roden that I'm not going to accept one. But after talking to Sean in my interview, which comes out on Muscle and Fitness Online, who I work for now, yes. um, you'll see that Sean Roden pretty much said you know, it was a lesson that he had to learn. Um, he did take his foot off the pedal. He needed a break. And he had all of the reasons why he shouldn't have posed, but he didn't have the foresight to say on Friday night, Jim, take a look at me. I, I don't want to embarrass myself, and I don't want to embarrass you. You be the judge. Had he done that, I think Jim Mannion would have relieved him of his responsibilities to pose. Nobody would have missed it because no one wants to see that. But you can't unring the bell. Mm -hmm. In his naivety um, and with his lack of support group who probably should have said, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, he did it, and then he had to wait for the aftermath. Now, he tried to justify it by saying, look, I come from a family of fat, skinny people and, you know, damage control. But after some time away from it, he realized that, you know what, probably wasn't a smart thing to do. He had it to do all over again. He wouldn't. But he got to that conclusion by all the guys he respects, negative opinion of what he just did. Bob Chick, Jay Cutler, myself, yourself. Nobody had anything good to say, and who, who wants that? I, I mean, nobody wants to be talked negatively because you look like crap, but 
the fans trying to justify that, hey, the guy can't stay on drugs year-round, give the guy a break. He needs, well, it's true, but he has a responsibility to keep his clothes on. Well, you, you, you just brought up a point I was going to get into because Sean, you know, speaking between the lines, he, didn't, he said, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm concerned about my health. Uh, so that's why I take time off. And he didn't specifically say drugs, but reading between the lines, he's basically saying that he takes large portions of the year where he cleans so out. Lebroni, so did I. I mean, a lot of people do. I mean, okay, that's all acceptable. The Olympia was in September. Right. We're talking about May. True. But, but my question to that, my response to that is, you know, what does that say about the Mr. Olympia title? No, I don't want to talk badly about the Mr. Olympia title. I love the Mr. Olympia. But what does it say about looking like that when even he, the best built man in the world, as decided by the judges, says, even I can't look like this, or even I'm not comfortable with doing what it takes to look like what you want me to look like most of the year. I mean, does that, to me, that sends a message like, uh, this sport is not good for you. Looking the way I look is not good for you. Uh, I can't eat clean all year because that's not good for you to stay well, that okay, lean. Let, let, let's try it so we don't beat a dead horse. Yeah. He now, you know, a month and a half away, realizes it was a mistake. Anything that he said was to cover up the embarrassment for actually going through with it. Hmm. He felt that obligation, being that he's Mr. Olympia. If he didn't, he would have never went. Yeah. Um, and he didn't have anybody in his head with experience to say this is a mistake. And some people don't. Listen, I mean, not all these bodies, it doesn't, being Mr. Olympia doesn't come with a script. Hmm. Um, and he probably felt like, you know, I, I, this is something I have to do, and I'll be able to explain it after the fact. It was an embarrassing moment. It was a low light in his career. But now let's rehabilitate the champ. I mean, he was training for the Arnold Classic, wasn't able to compete, had some intestinal ulcer type stuff. He missed the Mr. Olympia because he had a broken jaw. He had a baby. He went through a separation. Uh, he became the newly crowned Mr. Olympia, and he may be more concerned about his health than he is about his appearance throughout the year. Now we know all of that stuff in hindsight. There's really no excuse for a big blunder like that. But look, even Carl Lewis, you know, he's won how many gold medals on the track, and he went and he tried to sing the national anthem. You want to laugh at something? <laughs> Google Carl Lewis, American national anthem. Oh, no. He it's, tried to it's, worse than the, it's worse than Sean's guest posing appearance. But that's Carl Lewis, a decorated – track athlete with gold medals on the box of Wheaties. It's Sean Roden is still Sean Roden. So what, what people take away from that is that people are jumping off the Sean Roden bandwagon like, oh, he'll never be able to get in shape. He looked bad, but he didn't look any worse than he's always looked in the month of May. And I think the experts understand that. And he'll show up on game day ready to, bu to do business and all will be forgiven. Yeah. But the harshness came from a place that no, it's almost like disciplining a child. No, you don't touch that. No, don't do that. No, that's not acceptable. And you weren't going to hear it from Jim Mannion. So I think you heard it from people that are trying to protect the integrity of the sport and the hollow ground that is Mr. Olympia. I didn't care about the fans coming after me because of my harsh opinion. Mm -hmm. Let one of them dissect the fact that I wasn't telling the truth yeah. and catch me in a lie. Mine was coming from a place of responsibility. The same way Lee Haney would say, look, Sean, don't ever do that again. You can't do that, not to Jim Mannion, because Jim Mannion is the modern-day Joe Weider, is he not? Well, you know, I, mean, I was going to get into that because I don't know if you saw Kevin, when Kevin and I discussed this maybe six weeks ago, Kevin said that, you know, you himself, Lee Haney, Arnold, you guys were all fortunate that you had Joe Weider to be sure. there to guide you, and you would go to Woodland Hills, and you would see him on re at regular intervals. You know, you guys, at least once or twice a year, all the Weider athletes would come there and meet with him and right. uh, Lynn Conkright, and he would let you know what was expected of you. And, Absolutely. Uh, fix things like your posing. I mean, he was really a, a mentor to all you guys. And Sean and the, uh, the current crop of pros, they have nobody to guide them. It's, it's, there's no leadership anymore. So they're- Well, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> that's what I'm saying, Ron. I mean, we are of the age now, Kevin and myself, and Lee Haney, to speak on that. Because we knew how much we revered Joe Weider's opinion. And Joe's not here. And Jim slowly kind of stepped into that role. But the bodybuilders don't have the person to go to. So when we see something that's wrong, it's better for us to point it out when it happens than to whisper about it later on. That's why I went online and I talked openly about it. 
And of course, Sean gave me the interview because he knew I, I listen, Sean's very first contract, I helped him get that. Hmm. I was there to interview him for muscular development when he turned pro at the North Americas. We have history. Hmm. And when he wasn't able to compete in the Arnold Classic, I, me and him are going back and forth and I'm building the guy up saying, look, these are just trials and tribulations you're going to experience on the way to greatness. And then you wind up winning the Mr. Olympia. So he knew that when I came after him that way, it wasn't like, F you, you're not my friend, you're a joke. Hmm. It was discipline. It was like, dude, you can't, that's not acceptable. Because I know Joe Weider wouldn't accept it, but that's where me and Kevin come from. We come from that cloth that, look, to whom much is given, much is expected. And he even said, he quoted Jay Cutler, that, look, you need to act like Mr. Olympia, talk like Mr. Olympia, dress like Mr. Olympia. So he's still learning. It's only been eight months yeah. or nine months that he's been Mr. Olympia, and everyone looks at it differently. I think now he gets it. It's a tough lesson to learn. It's hard to hear your idols or your, your mentors criticize you. When, listen, he hit the Olympia stage, the first thing I said was Phil Heath's in trouble. Hmm. Sean Roden's the real deal. Wow. I didn't jump off the Sean Roden bandwagon. I was friends with Phil Heath. But I could see the potential and, and, and see it for what it was. But what's happening here in May, had I been there, and I was there a year ago, uh, had I been there and I got a chance to see him, I would have been the reason why he didn't guest post. Hmm. And Jim Manuel would have had to take it to me because I would have went to Sean and said, don't do it. And I would have brought Sean to Jim, Jim Manuel and said, Jim, don't do it. I, that's what I would have done out of an obligation to a guy that's Mr. Olympia because we want to protect our champion. We want our champion to look like one and act like one. The same advice that Jay gave Sean. But all that stuff is hindsight. So now Sean's got a mountain to climb because he put himself behind the eight ball and people are not expecting a whole lot from him. And I can tell you what, all he did was he ignited all of his competitors. Mm -hmm. You don't think 50-year-old Dexter Jackson is like flooring it right now on his way to Tampa Pro? And you don't think that Brandon Curry doesn't think he's got a head start out of the box against Sean Roden? So while well, Sean's excuses are valid, I need a break, it was a hard year, it was a long year, and blah, 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 blah. Um, he just fired up all of the guys that he's competing against. So now he's got even a bigger target on his back. Okay, so we got to get to this. This is a bad guy. Let me turn this fan off. Even though it's giving me a pleasant breeze, it's probably annoying everybody. Hang on. Okay, we're back. So, uh, you know, in your era, Sean, in all the Mr. Olympias up until now, I think social media has only really existed since about the middle of Phil Heath's reign. Correct. It's a fairly new thing. Um, you know, I, I, people ask me, like, what do you think? Would Dorian have posted pictures if there had been Instagram when he was Mr. Olympia? I don't think he would have. But. Well, listen, <laughs> since everyone is doing it in this era, why would Dorian not do it? I mean, it's not that you're pressured to, but it's part of the business. Yeah. At the end of the day, the magazines controlled what went in the magazines. We took the pictures, but there was an editor to control what photograph was picked, right. what article was used. Now we have control of our careers. We can, pick, we can put up a picture of our car, of our dog, of our kid. Dorian had a lot to be proud of during his run in those six years. I can't see him sitting on the sideline watching me, Nasser, Flex, Kevin, Vince Taylor, and everyone else promote ourselves hmm. and monetize that uh, and him not. Uh, Dexter Jackson just got done telling me he's getting paid to make posts. Kai Green's got a four or five million followers. Yeah. These guys are utilizing their, their social media as a business that they control. I think Dorian's smart enough to know that he would have had to do the same thing if it was marketing Temple Gym, if it was marketing the DY Nutrition products, if it was him selling himself as Mr. Olympia. I can't imagine that Dorian wouldn't have got on board with that because everyone – who's not doing the business of bodybuilding sitting on the sidelines and not promoting themselves through social media? There's not one athlete out there competing today that's not involved or, or engaged. Okay, now I'm going to read this post. This is When Sean posted uh... – his progress picture, well, we thought it was a progress picture. We assumed. It was <laughs> one week ago, and this is what he said. He said, we are back at the business of bodybuilding. We working, folks. Vegas, we are a go. And then, ha you know, a million hashtags, best is yet to come, blah, blah, blah. So, I don't know. So, if you can read, listen, I know. I saw the post. Yeah. If you can read and you can, you can intelligently decipher what was posted, nowhere in that post said that this is a current picture. Nowhere in that post did that, that picture is from 2019. Nowhere in that post did he say, look at my progress from May to July. Nothing. Right. He made no claims. Right. Who made the claims? Dave Palumbo, 
Nick Strength and Power or Nick's Motivation, one of those Nick guys out there. Right. And all these other nut huggers jumped on that picture and said, ah, look at all you haters now eating crow. Look at you guys. You're, look, nobody wants anything bad to happen to Sean. Hmm. But I can tell you with 100% certainty that from May to July, that picture never was taken. And Sean will validate that. All you got to do is ask the guy. He just never came out and said, hey, it's not a recent picture, nor did he have to. Hmm. Listen, I put, I put pictures up from my past all the time. It, it, Mr. Olympia is not exempt from doing that. But one thing he didn't do was make a false claim. I heard from Dexter. I heard from Chris Comier. I heard from Kevin Brony. I heard from all kinds of people going, did you see what Sean just did? Well, it was ingenious. How many likes does that picture have? <laughs> He's getting all the attention. That's what social media is for, to promote yourself. I got a trick. How many likes it got? Now, did didn't Chris Aceto confirm that it was a current picture? And when did Chris Aceto become the pillar of truth? Well, that's. I mean, he, that's he, he might as well work for freaking Donald Trump's press secretary. I mean, are you kidding me right now? Why would his trainer or nutritionist guru discount a picture? He's got people talking about the picture. Chris didn't take that photograph. Well, I'm saying that Chris is the one who gets progress pictures from Sean every well, morning. That wasn't one of them. Right. I'm telling you right now. Okay. You're talking to the truth. I mean, did, that picture yeah. was not from 2019, regardless of what Aceto said. But hey, as a nutritionist, as a trainer, why would I discount that that picture is from a long time ago? Hmm. If you ask Sean, Sean has no reason to lie. Nobody's even taking the time out to ask Sean. But Sean yeah. never made a claim that that was from this year. It's funny that people just ah. Well, your interview is coming up. When's your interview going to post, Sean? Um, it's, it was a 20 minute interview. It'll probably come out this week sometime. I'm hoping I don't, I don't have control over when it breaks, but I'll put the link up on MD. Okay. Did he address the, that picture in the, in your interview? No, cause that picture came up after. Okay. <laughs> and at the end of the day, like, listen, you're supposed to promote yourself. So if you put up a picture of the day after last year's Mr. Olympia, who's going to believe that it was from this year? I mean, we're not the... We're not the Instagram police. Who cares? It, we know what he looked like in May, and, he, and he's right. He only has to look good in September. Right. The one thing I just really struggle with is how much money did you cost yourself by taking your foot off the gas of just doing the business? Like you finally got to the holy grail. You got your picture up at Gold's Gym. You got the Sandow Trophy sitting there. If you do nothing else but cardio and maintenance training, you should still be able to work to guest post. Yeah. I mean, you're the number one guy. You're like the Heisman Trophy winner, and you can take that trophy around with you and promote yourself as a poser and make more money in two minutes' work mm -hmm. than you could doing a two-hour seminar or signing autographs or anything else that you do. Guest posing for Mr. Olympia is really a cash cow on a global scale, mm -hmm. and he missed that opportunity because he ran out of gas, and I just think it's – you know, you're at that age when this is business, and it is about representation, and it is about finances, and lucky he's got a daughter at home. It's like you got to see the bigger picture. And what's the easiest, fastest way for me to make money? Well, I've been doing it all, all my life, posing. Hmm. What do I have to do? Look respectable. I don't have to look like you know, Mr. Olympia. I'm, I'm compete. I'm posing with a bunch of amateurs. Yeah, true. I got to get on a maintenance program and book myself. I'm not even Mr. Olympia, and I was able to do that throughout my career, which helped. Me only compete once a year. And let me tell you something, Ron. When you're only competing once a year, you got plenty of time to recover and rest. Right. I mean, how about Dexter? How about Chris Cormier? How about Milo Sarchev? Even Flex Wheeler and Vince Taylor, those guys were at it year round doing all of those shows. Those were work blue collar bodybuilders that were able to do the business, didn't have any excuses, that they, they weren't screwed up, and they're all functioning very well, with the exception of Flex's his condition. But I competed once a year throughout my career, the same way that, well, Sean's pretty much doing now. Right. It's not that big of a jump to do some cardio, lay off the carbohydrates, and train. But, you know, to each his own. I can't tell you what someone should do with the Mr. Olympia trophy. I do know, though, that that Mr. Olympia trophy, his Mr. Olympia reign, probably has not been as financially rewarding for him um, because, of the, because of running out of gas, because of him wanting to protect his health. Uh, like he says, yeah. but when you do bad showings like this, it doesn't line up promoters to want to book you. Uh, now, if he replicates what he did a year ago, he becomes a two-time Mr. Olympia winner. I can imagine he will have learned from this past year's mistakes and will try to find a way to monetize that time after he wins the title and probably be a whole lot more visible because that was part of his criticism of Phil Heath, that he wasn't a very good representative. Yeah. And Phil had seven years as Mr. Olympia to be a better representative. Well, now that he has the title, 
Um, and maybe if he can defend that title, because there's nobody new, Ron. There's nobody new coming to this game. We're missing Big Rami. We're missing Phil Heath. And Kai Green's not anywhere in the picture. So who does he have to beat? He has to beat everybody that he beat a year ago. Will it be a walk in the park? He doesn't have Phil Heath. So who's he got to beat? Roland Winkler? He's got to beat William Bonac. He's got to beat an aging 50-year-old Dexter Jackson. Those are things that he probably feels comfortable knowing in his head. Don't forget Brandon Curry. Brandon Curry. Well, but I'm saying he's beaten Brandon Curry, right? right. So as a, as a champion, it's like they're all going to be there again. But if I just do what I did, maybe I can secure this as, and be a, a two-time champion. I, I honestly believe he's got to do more because he did, he did narrowly beat Phil Heath when Phil Heath was off. Right. No one was talking about third place. Mm-hmm. Roland Winkler was the most improved bodybuilder. It was the best that we'd ever seen him at the Mr. Olympia. He got the uh, crowd favorite award but he was never in contention to win the contest. He just looked really good for him. So he's got to beat Roland Winkler, he's got to beat William Bonac, and he's got to beat Brandon Curry, who's charging hard. And if I'm a betting man, Brandon Curry's the guy that I'm concerned about. But Sean Roden, in his mind, he's got to go to wherever he has to go and convince himself that I beat these guys before, and I've got to do what I've always done. And I just got to turn it up a little bit uh, for the last six weeks and, and really put myself out there as if Phil Heath is coming back. If he doesn't and he's on cruise control and he thinks because I've beaten these guys, I'm going to beat him again, Brandon Curry is going to wind up as your new Mr. Olympia. That's my, that's my prediction. Well, the, the, you know, that scenario is very likely because you know, he, was, he had his foot off the gas, as you've been saying. He was resting all that time. He wasn't making any improvements to his physique. He right, and he needed to. He needed to make improvements. He beat Phil Heath when Phil Heath was off. Right. But he beat Phil Heath with a lot of flaws. The back was not improved. His chest is very flat. His arms are average at best. Yeah. His thighs needed a little bit more thigh separation, even standing next to Phil Heath. But turning around in the back, when you start making improvements, and Brandon Curry's been making them by the boatload, right. and now he's hungry, and he could probably taste the idea that, look, you know, I won the Arnold Classic. I beat Rolly Winkler, who was hurt, had the injured knee. I beat William Bonick, who won it the previous year. Um, Brandon Curry is cocksure right now that Sean Roden is in his sight. So he's able to focus on his target, and he can work on his weaknesses. Sean Roden took that time off where he should have been working on his weaknesses to think that I'm good enough. Like, I didn't, I didn't need to improve. Now I just have to get in shape. And he really is one of those bodybuilders that needs to come out, bring a wow factor, show improvement that he's worthy of repeat, of being a repeat champion. Yeah. Because if Brandon Curry is improved from winning that Arnold Classic, Sean Roden's in trouble because Brandon Curry can theoretically beat Sean Roden if he's an improved bodybuilder. Right. You know, I mean, Sean, Sean's 43 years old, I believe. Maybe he's, is he 44 by now? I'm not sure. Yeah. But, you know... I understand the health, and he's got a child, and I understand all that. That makes perfect sense. But you're the top bodybuilder in the world, and you want to hold on to that title. Everybody, all those other guys you just talked about, they want to take that from you. They're not, they're not slacking. You know, I'm not saying that they're not concerned about their health, but they want that title, and they were working hard all this time since the last Olympia to improve and to beat him. And Sean let me give you, a, let me give you a boxing analogy, okay? Okay. So. You have the heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson. He's fighting a no-name in Buster Douglas. He goes over to Japan. He's partying it up, and he goes in the ring. And, of course, he realizes really quick that he's in for, he's in for a fight. Mm. He almost knocks the, knocks the defender down, and then here comes Buster Douglas, and he knocks him out, right? Yeah. Buster Douglas came from the back of the pack, 42 to 1 fate, uh, um, underdog, mm. comes in the back, and then Buster Douglas wins the title. What does he do after that? He goes on a promotional circuit as the heavyweight champion. He gets fat. He gets out of shape. Mm. And now he's got to fight Evander Holyfield. And guess what? Evander Holyfield demolished him within like a round or two. And we never heard from Buster Douglas again. Buster Douglas enjoyed being the champion so much and took his time off that when it came to defend the title, he didn't have enough preparation time behind him to fight a hungry challenger who wasn't Mike Tyson. Right? right? Evander Holyfield was no Mike Tyson at the time, but he knocked him out. So let's turn it to, to bodybuilding. Sean Roden wins the title and he takes all this time off and he doesn't use that time to make improvements. And now he's got his foot on the gas. He's trying to fast track all of this stuff to try to replicate what he did a year ago. 
Well, if he comes in looking like he did a year ago, it may not be enough, especially since we know Brandon Curry and company, they all trade through the Arnold Classic, even all the way through the Arnold Classic Australia. So they had a great spring yeah. of off-season training, took a couple, some time off from maybe March until May, and they were already hard at the business, but they didn't have to rebuild the muscle. Right. They don't have to go lose a bunch of body fat. Rolly Winkler just posed last week with me in China, and Rolly Winkler looks every bit 300 pounds, wow. but his is all hard muscle, right? He looks like he's got to lose some water, whereas Sean has to try to rebuild it. So it's going to be an act like Harry Houdini that Sean Roden is going to have to surprise all of us to replicate what he did a year ago. But if he replicates what he did a year ago, it may not be enough in the improvement factor because for me and my small frame, for William Bonick and his small frame, it's hard to make those big improvements to, for the judges to notice us. Yeah. But Brandon Curry has been improving every year. And Rolly Winkler's been charging and moving up every year. Right. So Sean doesn't have that comfortability zone where he, he's got everything he needs, like Phil Heath, and he can just turn it on. So it's going to be an interesting show. This is a contest where we can clearly say that the title is up for grabs. And Sean Roden is the reason why this title is up for grabs. Yeah. Up for grabs. Um, not because he's not worthy. But because he, he left the door open by taking such a long season off season off, uh, you can take that to the bank. That if he does get defeated, we'll go back and look at the reasons why he got defeated, and it's going to be his own words. His own words will be that prophetic tale of the tape that this is why I lost the show. Yeah. I took time off. I wanted to protect my health. I want to spend time with my family. I'm, we come from a fat skinny. That mindset is not what. A coach, a contest promoter, or even a challenger wants to hear from the champion who's supposed to be like, you know, you think Branch Warren would ever say something like that? Well, you know, the Tour de France is going on right now. And so is Wimbledon. So is Wimbledon. So these guys, the defending champions in those sports, tennis and bicycle racing, I can't imagine that they just picked up their training like four months ago and they were slacking and taking it easy. You know, those guys, these guys who are the top tennis players and the top bicycle racers, I imagine that they might rest out here and there, but they must they must be going insane with the practices for almost the entire year building up to these events. So Sean, this is not something that's traditional. Like Sean did train for the Arnold Classic, and then you couldn't compete in the Arnold Classic. So that helped prepare him for that victory year. So he had a very good offseason, mm -hmm. then came back and won the Olympia. This time he didn't. There was a long off season. There wasn't a lot of commitment. There wasn't a lot of building. There wasn't a lot of improvement. And you cannot speed up the body that way. And, and mind you, Father Time is undefeated. I don't know anybody as a bodybuilder that was getting better going into their mid-40s, right. including Ronnie Coleman. Mm -hmm. Do you know any bodybuilder going into their 40s? I mean, Vince Taylor was there, but he was competing in the Masters. Right. Um, one of the old guys, uh, Albert Beckles, in 1985, got second to Lee Haney, I think it was by process of elimination. The guys, it wasn't the depth. Um, Sean is at an advantage in that the guys coming after him, he's beaten. But he didn't beat him the way that he prepared a year ago. Yeah. He switched trainers. He doesn't have Chris Psycho. He's working with Charles Glass. Um, he's balancing the idea that I've, I've, I've got to play catch up. Um, there's a lot going on in this camp, man. And so what, it, what it's doing for me is it's making me excited because we're really going to see a contest this year. Like a lot of people went to the Mr. Olympia just assuming Phil Heath was going to tie record number eight. Right. As soon as we saw that that wasn't going to happen, we all kind of sat up in our chairs. We're like, holy crap, we got a show here. And we found ourselves cheering for the underdog. And then we saw the knockout. And then the, the place erupted. And, and it's Sean Roden, right? Yeah. Well, didn't we do that with Buster Douglas? And I was a huge Mike Tyson fan. But then when Buster took all that time off and came back to defend the title and it was like one and done, um, you, you don't have – he's at that age where he won't have the do-over. Right. Like this could be it. Like you know, if, if you lose the title this year, that may be the last chance that you have because now you're going to be 44 going after the title or 45 going after the title. And, and we know that – Time waits for no one. It's just a matter of attrition. These younger guys, they start creeping up, and then they start moving up. And, you know, who knew that Sean Roden would ever be a Miss Olympia? Who knew that Jay Cutler? Who knew that Gunther Schlierkamp would do what he did? And Sean did say in the interview, he said, I'm not really worried about William Bonac and, and Brandon Curry because they're going to be there in the end. 
Mm -hmm. I'm worried about that guy that was back there in ninth or 10th place. And that made me think, because I remember the 2000 Olympia, and Jay Cutler was in that. And Jay Cutler was like ninth place. Yeah. Not even, not, nobody even thought about Jay Cutler until 2001 and he got second. Right. In 1997, nobody thought about Ronnie Coleman getting ninth place in Long Beach. Mm-hmm. In 1998, he leapfrogged over five Hall of Fame bodybuilders and won the Mr. Olympia title. Right. Gunther Schlerkamp wasn't even in the top 10 of the Mr. Olympia. And the following year, he beat Ronnie Coleman. One week after the Mr. Olympia, and so when you're armed with this type of history and that knowledge, you know you got to give Sean credit that the guys that we know and the guys that we are talking about, they may not be the ones. It may be somebody at the back of the pack that shows up, and we're like, holy crap! Like, how did that happen? Ronnie Coleman was one of those guys, and we're all went, how and when did this happen? But it, but it happened, yeah. And uh, he sunk his teeth into it, and that's why. We're, I think there's a lot of non-believers on the Sean Roden train that he's able to repeat because he took his foot off the gas for too long. He may have rested uh, off-season for too long, and anybody starting at that point couldn't possibly become Mr. Olympia again. Mm-hmm. Well, it's up to Sean now to prove all of us wrong because he has the weight of the bodybuilding industry pretty much against him, saying there's no way. That he, and you don't deserve it if you're going to be able to take that kind of time off and look this way in the off-season. But he could shock us all. He could shock us all. I've seen I've seen stranger things happen, and uh, the only stranger thing I would love to see happen right now is that Phil Heath, at the last minute, says, "I'm in." Kai Green, I'm in. I mean, I, if I was either one of those guys and saw that in May, I would have said, "I'm in." Phil, Phil, you know, we'll find out soon about Phil. And I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not totally sold on the idea that he's not doing it. I think he I, might. He might be back. He might. We'll find out soon. We'll find out done. soon. And it, we, you and I are at the opposite ends of the spectrum. So come Olympia weekend. If he's in, I buy you a steak dinner. If he's out, you buy me a steak dinner. That's how we all win. How had to, who had to buy what? I forget. <laughs> yeah. If, I win, if he's in, you buy me one. And if, I, if he's out, I buy you one. Wait. If he's if he does the Olympia, I have to buy you a steak dinner. Correct. And if he doesn't, you have to buy me a steak dinner. So we'll just do, we'll leave it at that. No, it goes goes go the other way. If he's if he's in, you have to buy me the dinner because I'm saying I think he's in. Listen, you're you're getting the big bucks now, bro. Oh, definitely. You're doing but, such uh, a great job. You uh you reminded me of a Ronnie Coleman quote about you know who's because Ronnie always knew that anybody can win. Anybody that's at the Olympia level has the potential. So somebody asked him in an interview one year, Ronnie, who do you see as your biggest competition this year to take your title away from you? He said, all of them. That's true, and that's a that's the humbleness of that champion. He had that mindset. And also, I don't know what it's like to be last in the show. Ronnie was last in his first Olympia in 1992. I was there. Um, and when you talk to him, he remembers that. Mm-hmm. And even in the 2001 press conference, when I was complaining about the lack of transparency, price, money, judging, and all this other stuff, Ronnie was like, why complain? Yes. Because he didn't complain when he was last. He didn't complain who was this. And so the moral of the story is why complain? Exactly. Some people just have that. But he also has that, that point of reference where – he knows what it's like to not be in the conversation. Mm-hmm. He knows what it's like not to be first. Right. And then, but he did everything he could do once he became first place, right? I mean, Ronnie, nobody trained harder than Ronnie in the off season. So even when Ronnie was not at his peak, you couldn't discount the enormity of the muscularity, the commitment in the off season. Just, he just had things other people didn't have. Sean doesn't have that. Right. Sean has beauty working for him, which is genetics. But if you don't sculpt and shape and define all of that stuff just right, you can look average, and Sean looks very average in the off season. Right. So that illusion that he's got to create, he's got a very short window to create it, and uh, we're all trying to figure out whether he can do it. It's going to be a Harry Houdini act, and um, he put himself behind that eight ball. So now, you know, you don't have a lot of faith in him repeating as the Mr. Olympia, and we may be looking at the fifteenth Mr. Olympia. Who knows who that could be? Whoever it is, Ron, who, if it's not Sean Roden. We're going to have a Mr. Olympia that none of us ever believed could be Mr. Olympia. Brandon Curry was a guy that I think even myself was encouraging to go down into the 212 division just a few years back. That's right. That's right. William Bonick is a guy I said last year that if he eats a potato, he's going to be five pounds too heavy because there's no room to put any more muscle on that body, right? Yeah. yeah. And Roland Winkler was always kind of a promise not kept because he couldn't rip the muscle up in the quadriceps. He couldn't build up the thickness in the back. He was too top heavy with the arms. And he's just not really a, so much of a showman. So why would we talk about Roland Winkler winning the Mr. Olympia? But he's in the conversation now. Right. So Mr. Olympia could be coming from the Netherlands. 
It could be coming from Carousel, or it could be this guy from Tennessee, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and Brandon Curry. And Brandon's got four kids. And he spends half the year over in Kuwait. So there really is no excuse. Does he have five? I don't know. I think he five. But I'm just saying, we can't make excuses for Mr. Olympia as if his role as Mr. Olympia is any more or less important than what the role of his challengers are. I mean, Roly was just in China. Um, you know, William Bonick is doing his thing. All these bodybuilders are doing the same thing Sean Roden's doing, except most of them are posing because that's where the money is for them. Right. Sean's the only one not posing because he took his foot off the gas and he didn't book himself accordingly. All right. Well, I'm very much looking forward to your interview. It's going to be on Muscle and Fitness Online at some point this week. Uh, also, yeah. wh- when is the Sean Ray Hawaiian Classic taking place? So the Sean Ray Hawaiian Classic is coming November the 23rd in Waikiki Beach. It's going to be at the Hilton Hawaiian Hotel. Um, and also, the Olympia Weekend, we're working with the Wings of Strength. Yeah. And the Wings of Strength is bringing back a reunion of champions, uh, gathering the Miss Olympia champions, those that are available, and all the Wings of Strength champions to conjugate at the expo and have them all at one place at one time. So, so far, everybody's pretty much said yes. There's about two or three Miss Olympia winners that are on the fence that may not make it. But nonetheless, when have we ever seen the Miss Olympia winners in one place at one time? Hmm. When's the last time you saw Carla Dunlap? Kiki Ayoma, second girl to win the Miss Olympia. Um, so, Ayoma, geez, that's a black thing. Wait, the strength just happened. They had the Chicago show. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was there, and, and Jake Wood is doing a phenomenal job of he resurrected women's bodybuilding. It was almost gone. And that's what I'm saying. And he, Alina Pope was helping him out. And so they're bringing all, all these women together under one roof so people can kind of connect with the past and then also the present. And that's under construction right now. And, you know, Wings of Strength is, putting, is leaving a mark on the Olympia weekend for sure. And I think there's a groundswell in effect that maybe the Miss Olympia Championship might come back in 2020. Yeah. I mean, the rising phoenix that, that Jake puts on a week before the Olympia – is the closest thing we have to the Ms. Olympia now. I believe yeah, well, what's your take on it? Do you think the Ms. Olympia should return? Well, yes. I mean, I find it almost obscene that we have a Bikini Olympia, a Figure Olympia. We have all these, you know, next year we'll probably have a Wellness Olympia. And we don't have yeah. a Ms. Olympia for bodybuilding because, you know, you, you're a little bit older than me, so you're definitely of the era when there was just men and women's bodybuilding. Right. That's all there was, and everything else grew from that years and years later. So it seems it seems ridiculous to me that we don't have Ms. Olympia title in women's bodybuilding. You know, well, I can tell you that Jake Wood and uh, his crew are working hard to make that happen. And I think with Dan Solomon at the head, uh, and he understands that, uh, and with Wings of Strength sponsoring and supporting the Olympia, there's a very strong possibility that somehow that might come back in some form or fashion uh, in 2020. And uh, you can't discount the financial contributions Wings of Strength has made towards the women's bodybuilding movement. Yeah. So if at the very least, franchise the Miss Olympia name so that these guys can you know, get, reward the women that are actually doing the business. If it, was, it wasn't the women's fault that it disappeared. Yeah. Uh, and some people say it might have been a lack of sponsorship dollars or it certainly wasn't a lack of participation because I travel the world. I see women bodybuilders all the time. Right. Um, so I'm all in favor of it. Uh, and, and I think it should be included with the Olympia weekend, but even that, even if it's not, then it should have its own standalone weekend um, if we're going to keep doing business with Wings of Strength. And right now, they are the biggest financial contributors, contributors to the Olympia weekend. Wow. So at some level, they've got to be rewarded um, and also pacified to the degree that their support continues. I mean, uh, I believe – you can quote me because I'm pretty sure I checked on this – the cash prize and the, the overall prizes that they give out at Rising Phoenix are superior, greater than we ever, they ever gave out to the Ms. Olympia. So They're bigger than the 212. Well, way bigger than that. But I'm saying even when there was a Ms. Olympia, at the, yeah. at, toward the end when the prize money was at its peak, it's still being superseded now by, by what Jake Wood and his crew have been able to raise through the sponsorships to award to these women in his show. So the money's there. The sponsorships yeah. are there. He's been very creative in finding ways to, to get this money available because, yeah. Well, I got his back. I, I got his back. I'm in, I'm in agreement. Uh, listen, women with muscles are just as, uh, as beautiful as guys with muscles. If you want to try to change the narrative, then you got to change the judging. But it's up to the judges to steer which direction they want women's bodybuilding to go. I mean, obviously, women's physique is, is bodybuilding light. But I guarantee you, if they include bodybuilding, 
there's a lot of women physique women that might move up into that category, yeah. um, namely for the reward. You know, I mean, the the reward is is there, and Jake is rewarding these ladies and giving them opportunities. So uh, I was with Halle Trevino in Iraq, and man, the the place went nuts to see a woman with that kind of muscle. Um, hmm. Granted, listen. All women with muscles isn't beautiful, just the same way that all men with muscles not beautiful. Right. But nonetheless, we can't ignore that it exists, and it's a part of the Olympia fabric. And I think now that you know there's this relationship between Wings of Strength and the Olympia Weekend, it, it may potentially come back. And I'm, I'm, you and I will both be there reporting on it. Absolutely, I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they are our sisters in iron. Absolutely. I, it, it hurt me to see the see it fall off the way it did. It really did. Absolutely. Well, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, if there's if you have that pinnacle, then it gives weight to some of the other promoters to potentially bring it back to their shows. You know, maybe it comes back to the Arnold, maybe it comes back to some of these NPC shows, but without the support, the women have nowhere to go. So I, I think that this might be the first step in the right direction and maybe twenty twenty looks better than twenty nineteen. All right. So Sean make it, make people better, make it better. better. Yeah. So, Shout out to my boy Eric Yamashita out in Hawaii. Uh, November 23rd, we're coming. You coming? You going to come cover it for Muscle Development? Don't I wish, Sean. Don't I wish. It's, it's the same weekend as the national championship. Where would you rather be, Miami or Hawaii? Oh, boy. That's, uh, that's not a tough question at all. Obviously, Hawaii. Uh, well, talk to your boss and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so. All right, man. Well, thanks for having me on. I got to eat, Ron. I'm shrinking. I understand. So, one last thing. Where do you want people to go to follow you and what you're up to? Well, you know, you can always follow me at my website, which is SeanRay.Fitness. You can check me out at MuscleAndFitness.com or MuscleFitnessOnline. Um, and also, obviously, you're going to see me at the Wings of Strength show in September out in Arizona. I'll be at the Mr. Olympia the following weekend. Prior to that, I'll be out there uh, covering the uh, Black Skull competition in Chile, Santiago, Chile, coming up August the uh, 10th and 11th. I'm all over the place, man. So my, my calendar is on my website. I'll be emceeing that show in Romania for Wings of Strength also. That comes up uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning of November. Right. And then Hidetati Yamagishi has his Amateur Olympia in Japan, November the 17th. I'll be out there emceeing that, sending some of my winners from my Maui show to that competition to compete. So we're getting creative, Ron. We're going global, bro. I'm going to wind up out in Switzerland on October the 27th, yeah. emceeing an NPC show out in Switzerland. So good things are happening for the NPC worldwide. And January the 11th, Sean Ray Classic India Reloaded. Wow. That'll be happening out in India. I'll make sure you get that information. So I'm trying to get back where I can. Gotcha. Trying to help up, help everybody out. Cool. Well, I don't want you to lose your gains, so go get that meal. Appreciate you taking the time and uh, sharing your opinion. You're never shy. I love that. So thank you very much, Sean Ray. You got it. This has been the Ron Line Report. Thanks for watching.